No man's knowledge here can go beyond his experience. This is the view of an empiricist educator. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Dr. Rosario Andaya and my dear classmates. This is Ms. Merli Balyaco. And I'll be sharing with you the theory of Mr. John Locke and his contribution to education. To start with, John Locke, born in 1632 and died in 1704, was an English philosopher and physician, the most influential of Enlightenment thinkers, the father of liberalism, the first British empiricist, a government official, a theologian, and an educator. John Locke Open classified as empiricist because he believed that knowledge is founded in empirical observation and experiences. So here are the principles of teaching and learning according to John Locke. On Locke's writing of an essay concerning human understanding that was published in 1690, he examines how we acquire ideas. He held that at birth, our human mind was a blank slate, a tabula rasa, or empty of ideas. He also explained that the child is born devoid of innate ideas and that knowledge is instead determined only by experience resulting from senses perception, a notion now well known as empiricism. We gradually acquire knowledge about the world from information our sense brings to us. Here is the illustration on how senses become the gateways in acquiring knowledge. We learn through taste, touch, smell, we learn by hearing, and we learn through sight. By this, John Locke believes that learning begins by reading followed by writing. So simple, small, or meek ideas become complex ideas when we join them with together or when we put them together, combine them, and this become more compound ideas through comparison, reflection, and generalization. So, let's have some reflection on the theory of Mr. John Locke. In his book on some thoughts concerning education, Locke wrote that a proper education begins in early childhood, where parents and adults has a great role to train them. He emphasized that children should be prepared in facing challenges and adversities of life by training them gradually from their childhood. For example, a boy should expose to the sun and wind not worrying of their skin complexion. Instead of sheltering them in shades, they need to go out and explore new things. Of course, they need to be supervised by their parents. And girls should also need to get out of their comfort zones while taking care of their health and beauty. This will give us a clear view of Locke's purpose on his theory that he wants to raise up a man of strength, a man of business. In Locke's view, the children's life should be simple. Emphasizing a sound mind in a strong and healthy body, he called attention to the importance of child's physical, social environment, diet, and activities. Children should take breath of fresh air, have a sufficient sleep, eat healthful and sim simple food, but regularly exercise frequently and have some time for recreation and play. Learning, according to John Locke, should be in a gradual process. Instruction in three R's, reading, writing, arithmetic, should be slow and clear. So, what is the effect of John Locke's theory on our educational practices today? His empiricist epistemology, which stresses sensation as the course by which we construct our thinking, stressed the significance of mathematics as an effective tool of abstraction, stimulate experiential processing learning, and use of scientific method of instruction. So here are the list of John Locke's major accomplishments. And to end up my report, let me finish by reflecting on John Locke's quote. Education begins the gentleman, but reading, good company, and reflection must finish him. As John Locke records in this quote, formal education is only a portion of being enlightened. To truly become knowledgeable, one must incorporate their own knowledge into their mindset, and we call it reflection. 
And this is the common trend of our modern education today. And to let it work, students have to essentially reflect on the meaningful events of their lives and eventually it will have an influence in their own thinking. Again, thank you po and God bless.